Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator. And the other day we we were helping uh, Zio 786 with uh, Rafidium and Isaiah is pointing out, like, do you understand the licensing you have on this? And it's what you're allowing people to do. So um, we had a really long, interesting conversation, but I thought, you know what? This is something I'll probably a lot of people don't fully understand. Yeah. And um, why don't we talk about it, Isaiah? I don't know if you want to share your screen now or just start talking about the, the two main ones. There's the MIT one and the, you said GPL? Um, uh, yes, the general public license, the new lesser general public license and so yeah. on. So basically, and obviously, there's a lot of other ones. Too, right? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> the most that's what far. I was going to say. So, 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 first of all, the first thing that I have to say as a disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I can't right, tell yeah. you anything about it, right? So, <laughs> no, so you, you have to decide on your own. Uh, and I do not have all the information on it either. So, but I would tell you kind of like the main idea and why you must be careful with it. Okay. So, Basically, first of all, as you mentioned, there's a lot of licensing options out there. Um, there and the idea behind them is how restrictive or uh, permissive they are in respects to the software or whatever they're licensing, right? So there is uh, some licenses that are very common and you will hear a lot about them. One of them that is really uh, for a few years now used very often is the GPL library uh, license, which is the general public license. Um, it has been very common for a long time because it allows you freedom of using software and using the source code to create whatever you want, but it also restricts certain very specific access to it. That's what it's all about. Where is the problem? What is the biggest issue? The biggest issue, and this is very common. For example, I create a library. I make it open to the public. I give you the source code and I give it for free. So I don't do anything with it, right? Now, here comes a huge company, Amazon, uh, Google, you know, they do this, by the way. Look for a very good library that is out there, free, grab it, and they close it. So that now they make modifications and nobody else can see the modifications that they're making because the, the source now is closed. Now it's kind of like proprietary. It's mine. I will make changes. You don't know what changes I'm doing. Nobody else has access to it. And now they make millions of dollars out of it. But the community doesn't, doesn't get to learn how they do stuff, right? And that's the biggest issue. The developer has it open. You learn how to do very cool stuff or actually verify that it's not doing anything weird, you know, but bigger companies make proprietary software that we cannot see the soft, the, the, the source code. And that or, is a little bit of an issue. Yeah. Or they, they take it, do something really bad with it. Um, and yet they still, you know, it, they didn't include depending on what you've done, right? They, they, well, here's the other thing. I should take a step back. <laughs> All of this is subject to the people actually following, you know, the licensing thing, right? So, which unfortunately from talking to my IP lawyer in general, whenever you go down this route, it's a battle, you know, it's an expensive it battle of doing this kind of stuff, but it does give you at least some legal, you know, standing. That's, that's the thing. So partners. basically, even though, even though some people are going to steal the thing and they're going to do whatever they want, still, it gives you, something that you can use in court. And if, especially if you find out who it is, you can actually take them to court and have something with them. Now, the GPL does not tell you that you cannot sell the software. You can sell it, but it tells you it, whenever you distribute your software compiled, you must also provide or link to the source code. That's what it means. Yeah. And the MIT license, for example, which is another very common one, doesn't restrict you of that. You can grab the source it's code. West. Yeah. Right. You can grab it and you can close source it, modify it. And, and basically the other thing is that there are some licenses that require you to credit the author. Like you have to say this belongs to this author and this was created at that time. But the MIT license is extremely permissive on that. So you might not need to 
um, credit the author. You might close source it if you want. So you have to understand what is going on. And if you don't care about that, that's fine. But if you do care about a project that you're, you know, working a lot and you don't want somebody to just close source it and, you know, do something else, you might need to look into that. And just as an example, I have here some, um, some information regarding how to choose a license. And basically, if you go to GitHub and you go to the... I'll put a URL right right. Right. There. We can just go ahead and give the link. But they give you kind of like a summary of all the ones that are out there. Um, well, not all, but... No, I'm sure no, no, no. So, yeah, there, there are way many more. I, 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 there's one that I, I, I remember uh, in the Auto Hockey forums, there's like the do what you want license. And it was funny because it's, uh, yeah, the what, <laughs> WTFPL. <laughs> It is really like do what the f you want to the public you to public license. So it is it is a very very permissive license. Um, but there are others you know that are more kind of like more um, strict or more formal. Even though they're very permissive, the MIT license is very common now because I think GitHub defaults to that one. But you have to understand what it means because it defaults to it, and you say like, oh yeah, that's okay. Yeah, maybe that's not okay. And th there's a page called choose an open source, uh, like choose a license.com. And it gives you kind of like a very, very good summary of what it is. So now it says, if you, if you, the MIT license is short and to the point, it lets people do almost anything they want with your project, like making a distributing closed sourced version and that is very important if you understand what closed source means that well you, you have to understand that because i could for example grab your library close source it do something bad with my new version but it looks very similar to yours right right but That's now my but my version now is connecting to a very bad site or whatever but as it is closed source, people cannot review it, so yeah, they cannot see it. They don't know how it was changed. Yeah, they don't know how it's changed because they don't have they don't have access to the to the. Or source. worse yet, let, let's let's keep it. Let's do this. You 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 know, um, you go create your own version of let's say Auto Hotkey, right? Uh huh. Hey, come download it here, and inside it, you've embedded some crappy stuff that's stealing, you know, doing stuff. Right, and I'm not giving you the the, the source code because I just right. closed source it. So now you have a very bit of, a, of an issue because now people are associating that right. that stuff with right. the original library, which has nothing to do with it. So again, having a different license doesn't prevent people from doing that. But if you catch one doing that in court, you will have more standing if you didn't have an MIT license. Because what happens is the GPL3 they also let people do almost anything they want with your project except distributing closed source versions, which means if they use your project anyhow or they modify it or whatever, they still have to provide the sources open to the public so that everybody can go ahead and see the source, right. and which is the most important part. So those are the two main ones and the difference between them. And whenever you choose uh, your license, you have to keep those in mind. Do you mind if the, somebody close source your project? If you do not mind, the MIT license is quick, is simple, and basically does not restrict anything. And in my case, I use it with a lot of my uh, simple libraries that I do for teaching or something like that, like, because I, I just want it open. You can do whatever you want with it because usually they're very simple, you know, 10 liners. Uh, and they're not like something that you can turn into something, you know. But when I do some other projects, like for example, I created the Autohawk Kid 2 Kid library. I gave the source code, but I require you to keep the source code open. If you make changes and you want to distribute it, because that's the key, is when you distribute it. If you use it for yourself and, and you modify it and do whatever you want with it, that's not an issue. It's when you start giving it to other people that now I require you keep the license, credit me, 
and keep the source code open so that people could review what the heck you're doing. Because I don't want anything to do with somebody that modified my program and do very weird stuff with it. So that's that's you, what you have to keep in mind with those licenses. Do we call the, the, you know, we were working on the bar chart, GD. Um, yes. What, what license, because that one you said basically we couldn't, we weren't able to put it into something where we're selling, you know, making money off it. Do you recall what, was it a standard license or was it? No, no, no. He, he, he actually, and this is the other thing, you're not bound to very specific licenses like these. You can write whatever you want in your license file. And he decided like, no, uh, this is for personal use and you cannot resell or you cannot, you cannot use it in um, commercial projects is what he said. So that was his uh, words. There is no, License that well, we're not making an advertisement. That. There's no commercials. No, <laughs> I'm not really sure. And that's the the reason why I decided not to do it is because it was not clear if just using it in a project that I would make money off was covered in that or not. So in that case, right. I decided not to use it just in case because again, yeah, yeah. Right. it's not like it's not like yeah, he's gonna come to my house and do something. It's just. Right. In case, oh, yeah. and, and the case we're doing, doing for, yeah, very little money, and it's not a widely used thing. But it's still just you know, hey, we're, we're developers too, right? We don't want people right. doing our stuff and things that we don't say it's okay for. So, right, um, exactly. So basically, in that case, you can put whatever license you want, and there are licenses that um, give you specifics about how you can do commercially or not. Mm-hmm. But he didn't use one of those. I would, I would actually. Uh, not recommend you use your own words as a license. Oh yeah, because yeah. because there's a lot of things that could go wrong in court and you don't know them. You, so oh, it's yeah. usually better to use a boilerplate one that actually covers better. a lot of bases no, that you're not thinking. By lawyers, right? Yeah, it was developed by lawyers and they know what can go right. wrong that you might not be thinking about that. No, so I, it is I, better I to use that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, all right. Thanks. Hopefully that helps enlighten people. I'm interested if anyone's developing stuff, what licenses do you guys use, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah. um, and, you know, why, more importantly, uh, why <laughs> did you choose? But yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.